Okay, well, uh, good morning, and uh, thank you for attending a media conference this morning. Um, with uh, joining me this morning is, of course, uh, Maddie Vanstone and uh, her mother Beth, and the PC Health critic uh, Christine uh, Christine Elliott. I'll say a few words that we're going to ask Maddie and her mother to uh, say, uh, bring their comments, and then uh, Christine will, will wrap up this morning. Uh, the fundamental question that we are here to talk about today is how this government can put a price tag on a young person's quality of life. <laughs> here I told Maddie to turn hers off. <laughs> and why do 12-year-olds, Maddie's friends and classmates, have to raise money to keep their friend alive? This morning over 70 people have travelled to Queen's Park because Ontario's health care system is failing 12-year-old Maddie Vanstone. Maddie has a rare form of cystic fibrosis that affects a very small percentage of the population. And as a result, she requires the medication Kalydeco to help her breathe. In August, I received a response letter from the health minister noting that OHIP won't fund this medication for Maddie solely due to its high cost. The health minister hides behind the Pan-Canadian Pricing Alliance, yet another agency that has zero transparency, while Maddie continues to wait in limbo. The day this government penned that letter and determined that Ontario's health care system didn't have room for 12-year-old Maddie is the day that residents in my community and many communities across Ontario took matters into their own hands. Outraged by this government's neglect, Maddie's classmates, teachers, friends and family, many of whom are here today, took it upon themselves to raise enough money to get Maddie this medication. Thanks to their diligent efforts, Maddie has been receiving Kaleidical for the past seven months and is now pretty much symptom free. Within 30 days of being on the drug, Maddie's lung capacity improved by over 100%. In six months, her headaches and stomach problems had pretty much been resolved, and she had managed to gain 15 pounds, more weight than she had gained in the past two and a half years. Last year, when Maddie wasn't receiving Kaleidical, she missed 96 days of school, she spent 28 days in hospital, she experienced constant headaches, stomach aches, her lung capacity functioned at 79% at best, and without Kaladico, Maddie's doctors anticipate that she will need a lung transplant by her mid-teens, and even then the disease will continue to attack her, her new lungs. If this government is funding to give top CCAC executives 50% pay increases, not to mention the billions of dollars they have wasted on scandals, then they have enough money to give a young girl a chance at a life. Part of being in government is setting priorities life-saving medication for children should be one of them. This afternoon, Maddie's family and friends will be joining us in question period where my colleagues and I will be asking the Premier to not only meet with Maddie but to commit to fully funding Kaleidico. And later this afternoon, I'll also be presenting petitions that have been collected on Maddie's behalf. just want to remind everyone that immediately following this media conference, you're all invited to join Maddie and her friends on the grand staircase to take pictures and ask any further questions you might have. I now ask Maddie and her, her mother to bring a few comments. Ready? Um, this is incredible how much support I've been getting. Um, I'm really happy, but I wish that my community and friends didn't have to do it. I appreciate it a lot, but they don't have to do it if the government could cover it. So. And I'm feeling so much better. I'm, I'm not sick anymore because of Kaleidico. And if I go off it, I don't know what I'll do because this improves my life significantly. So, thank you. Thank you. Um, so my hope today, uh, Premier Wynne has agreed to meet with Maddie and I today at 10 o'clock. We're really excited about this meeting. Um, we're hoping that with um, Premier Wynne's um, position um, over and above the Pan-Canadian Pan Alliance that she can stop the current gridlock and get this price negotiated and get this drug on the table for Maddie and the other CF CFers in Ontario. The drug has been um, approved and price negotiated in 11 other, other countries. So as far as I can see, a price has been negotiated. Um, 14 months to uh, negotiate a price that's already been set in 11 other countries is a little bit ridiculous as far as I'm concerned. There are people that are getting sicker and sicker. The wheels have been spinning and, and we're not going anywhere, so we're hoping that um, Premier Wynne can put an end to this. 
uh, prior to Maddie's next fundraiser, which is March 17th. So we're hoping that she can either announce today that this is going to be funded or that we can have it funded prior to March 17th and end this gridlock and uh, move forward so that people can be healthy. I think the right to breathe is essential and that uh, every Canadian, Ontario, and, and the CFRs that have a drug that can help them breathe should be available to them now. Thank you. Well, tragically, this has become a debate that's only about money, and I think we all need to remember that Kaleidico is really the only drug that can deal with the underlying causes of Maddie's cystic fibrosis. Uh, with Kaleidico, Maddie can live like every other 12-year-old girl. She can, she's free from pain, she can go to school, she can breathe, she can participate in life. Uh, you can't put a price on that. Uh, we need to talk to the Premier, we need to talk to the Minister of Health to say how much is too much to, put a, to save the life of a child. Those are the questions we need to be asking because people across the province have told us that that is why they pay taxes, so that they can come to the aid of people when they need help. That's what our health care system is supposed to be about and that's what we're going to be reminding both the Minister of Health and the Premier about today and asking her to come to Maddie's assistance and pay for Kaleidico so she can have a normal like, life like every other child. Thank you. Questions? Uh, what would the cost, I forget, I forget the weather before, but what would the cost be for, for Maddie and sure. Karen? How many other people are in need? Um, it's my understanding in Ontario that there's 20 people that aren't covered by private insurance. Um, we did a rough figuration and it would be, to add to the current budget, it would be approximately $2.25 per Ontario in um, a year to save the lives of those 20 people if that was required. I believe the total comes to something like $8 million mm -hmm. and it's $300,000 uh, per person tr uh, per year. Maddie, can you talk about how you felt before you started taking the drug and then after? Before, I was always tired. I didn't have the energy to do. I couldn't go up the stairs. I'd be. I couldn't breathe by the time I got to the top. I didn't have any energy. I had headaches all the time, belly aches, and now that's just gone. I can go up the stairs just fine. I can play with my friends. I can do sports, and I, I feel so much better. Maddie, can you tell us what you're going to tell uh, the Premier when you, when you meet with her? What's, what's your message? We can't wait any longer. People are, are getting sick and dying. We need this now, and there's no, no more time to waste. What kind of discussions did you have with the government before? Now, did you talk with the Minister of Health? Where, where is this? This has been um, f over 14 months. The drug was approved and recommended by Health Canada in December of 2012. And since that time, there's other uh, CF advocates that have also been meeting with um, uh, everybody involved pretty much, um, particularly Deb Matthews. Um, we've received letters back that actually have information that's not even correct. I've got a, um, a complaint into the Ombudsman's Board about the process and the length of time this is taking and I showed a letter that we received. One of the comments in the letter was that mm -hmm. Maddie would be able to get the drug if she was in the hospital. So that to me was just ridiculous. So she's got to be sick enough to be in the hospital. Then she would be on the drug and be out. And secondly, it's to, it's to keep her out of the hospital in the first place. And as well, the drug would not be funded if she was in the hospital. That was a misinformation that she put in the letter. So we've been getting the same regurgitated information that it's sitting in, that they're negotiating, but there's no timeline for this process. So how long do people have to wait while they keep passing the buck onto this Canadian Pan Alliance for price negotiations? It's been negotiated in 11 other countries. Why is Canada not catching the, the boat and getting this looked after? And the official reason that the government has been giving you is that it's too expensive. That's right, and they're negotiating the price down. That's correct. This is, you know, I guess in the category of orphan drugs. Mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, just to Jim or Christine, what, it, what is the PC policy on, you know, uh, orphan drugs as not just this drug, but as a class? Like, what would the Tory government do with regard to funding orphan drugs? 
Well, we're seeing this with a number of drugs, with Kalydeco, with Esbriet, with Avastin for certain uses. And this is going to happen increasingly as new pharmacological discoveries are being made, which is a good thing. But we have to be able to find the money to be able to pay for it. That's one of the reasons why we're talking about transforming our health care system so that we are going to be able to have the money to pay for these new drug discoveries for these orphan drugs so that people like Maddie and others with IPF and other uh, conditions are going to be able to get the care that they need. And I would just add, but during my time as, uh, as Minister of Health, uh, Every once in a while, you had a difficult decision to make, but it was, uh, and the advice I always got from the senior bureaucrats, and at that time there was no drug czar that was set up by, uh, that bureaucrat was put in place by the Liberal government under legislation two, three years ago. Um, the minister was directly responsible back when the PCs were in uh, to make these decisions, and uh, always based, and I know my colleagues that followed me were always based on efficacy and whether the drug worked or not. And, uh, and quality of life. And price was a way, way down the list. Um, so I guess if they hadn't wasted billions on e-health, orange, and gas plants, and high salaries all around, uh, they'd have enough money for this. But I was shocked back in uh, August. I finally got a response to my letter of last July from uh, Deb Matthews. And as uh, Beth has said, it was strictly based on price. No word about advocacy or, or, uh, or Maddie's quality of life, which was uh, heartless and cruel, I thought. So there's no other medication that could help you, Maddie? There are some, but this one, I, like, it's the most effective. It totally, it clears everything up, and it makes me better, so. The other, the other drugs that are available are symptomatic, so they can treat specific symptoms of cystic fibrosis. This drug actually corrects at the cellular level. So while she's on Kaleidoco, she no longer actually even tests positive for cystic fibrosis. So it's much different than treating, you know, four, four masks for her lungs and a different one for her pancreas and a different one for her digestive system. There's a lot of a difference there. It's the only drug that will treat it at the cellular level. So it's quite amazing. How many people have signed the petition that you're going to present today? I don't know. Um, I have quite a stack. Do you know? We have over probably 1,200 signatures that we brought yeah. along with whatever you've collected at your office. Yeah, we've got so quite a few province, province-wide too. So I would say 2,500, double that. And when you consider we come from small communities, that's <laughs> that's pretty incredible. Hey, Maddie, how does it feel to have your uh, classmates here today? Amazing. <laughs> um, I love that they're supporting me through all of this. And that's how I know they're my real friends. <laughs> so, what did they say? What did they say to you um, when they decided they were going to come? What did you guys talk about? Well, my some of my friends texted me last night, and <laughs> they said they were happy to do this. They didn't mind, and they wanted to be here for me. And it's just, it's really like it's a happy feeling for me. So. And when you're at school and you didn't have the drug, was it how hard was it to play with your friends? It was extremely hard. I, I did. I just didn't want to do it because I couldn't. So. Any other questions? Were you able to raise with the fundraiser? We've raised over probably over sixty thousand. However, um, every month it's five thousand seven hundred and seventy. That is our portion that we pay. So we have currently probably four months in the bank right now to keep her going. So like I said, there's another fundraiser, um, St. Patty's Day, and uh, we're hoping prior to that that we'll get an announcement that this is going to be looked after so that we can end the fundraisers. Yeah, and I'll just add some of the uh, uh, Maddie's uh, school, school chums have been, uh, schoolmates have been uh, recognized by the community for, for their fundraising. What are some of the things they've been doing? Well, some of my friends, they're actually here right now. They walk dogs over the summer and raise money to help. <coughs> and my, my whole school, each class made baskets to put into a silent auction for some of my fundraisers. Um, they've done a lot of things, <laughs> so. Any more questions? Well, you're a brave girl and a beautiful girl. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We'll do the best we can for you. Thank you.
Thanks, everyone. We'll go out to the staircase now and we'll meet, uh, we'll meet Maddie's friends.